Герцеговина, відомий вчений, який тривалий час працює на стиці між серцево-судинною патологією і кістково-м'ясовими запухуваннями. Thank you very much again for a uh, warm invitation and this is my third time in uh, Ukraine. The first one is, was in Donetsk and uh, the night I arrived we went to the football game. We watched, uh, you know, we won the uh, championship league in this uh, first night. Athletic. Athletic, yeah, all right. From Spain. From Spain, From Spain yes. yes. So he's a big fan of football, you know. So the second time was in Lviv and this is now Kiev, you know. Well, actually, since uh, you know, I'm uh, my specialty is rheumatology and uh, cardiology as well. You know, I do actually think that uh, this is two two diseases, two distinct diseases that uh, we always deal with the different uh, issues. But this is actually my idea is hypothesis that there's the whole body is actually one system, and this is all affected by one to each other. So the title of my presentation is cardiovascular and the musculoskeletal risk factor modification in aging. Uh, the idea that if you really treat the cardiovascular risk factors, then actually you also help the musculoskeletal and the vice versa. So if you, if you treat osteoporosis and the musculoskeletal disease disorders, you in the same time help heart and vascular system. So this is uh, this is one uh, photo from the city. Povrozhik once was once in, in this city. This is our University of Clinton Center Medical Faculty as well, Sarajevo. So the, as you know, the definition of aging, aging is actually one of the, main, the most challenging for all of us in our life. And this is a bit that we as a professionals, we don't actually deal much with aging, but this is a prevention is the most important thing in our life. So aging is progressive deterioration of physiological functions. So the our goal and the mission of medical professions, you know, is how to actually stay healthy and how actually to stay more physiological. So when we age, we lose the ability and of course we have increased risk to the falls, to the vulnerability. So the main question here is aging disease. So there is some uh, nice point of view from some uh, Russian colleagues and uh, they said and they published in uh, uh, Gerontology Journal 2017, they said that aging is the cause of many age-related diseases. So when we age, we are prone and we have more risk to get some more diseases. So, but not every disease, of course, is associated with aging, and disease progression with age is related to aging. So age-related diseases, the majority of ones is actually cardiovascular one, hypertension, <coughs> cancer, osteoarthritis, diabetes, osteoporosis, and multiple chronic conditions. So you see the cardiovascular and musculoskeletal and bone disease are actually the major risk uh, diseases for aging. Well, the main point is actually vascular. The main point is vascular, and you know, even in the 17th century, Thomas Sidenham said the man is old as his arteries. So we should always check our arteries and vascular tissue because every disease probably starts early in the, in the vascular system. For, for the young colleagues over here, you know, when we teach the young students, we always teach how to palpate pulse, and we know that we have, if you have a strong pulse, we know that this artery is really, is really healthy. If you have a weak pulse, you know, we can always say this is a very, is, this artery becomes old. So the main thing in our life is actually calcification, you know. Calcification uh, is actually one of the, well, one of the biggest challenge and issue of, and the and unhealthy consequence of our, of our life. You see that calcification, we, we calcify actually in all cells, in all tissue, in all organs. As you see, the atherosclerosis is actually calcification of vascular tissue. So this is the definition of atherosclerosis. And the atherosclerosis is aging disease. And we have vascular remodeling at the same time accumulation of the plaque, loss of arterial elasticity, and we stiffen the, the vasculature. If you look at the nature of the capillaries and capillary wall, you have the similarity from the nature of, over here that you can see in these two pictures. If you look at the aortic calcification, 
aortic calcification, if you look at the, someone who is 80 years old and someone who is 40 years old, this, pain, this person has 140 times more calcium in aorta than somebody who, who is 40 years old. So you see how actually we, we, we actually calcify and we are getting a, we are getting old. Nice picture from uh, trans echo of outer sclerosis of aorta and from 3D echo you see you see the bone over here. You see the nice bone like we have a bone you know in extremity we have the bone the same bone sitting in our aorta. So this is the same content the same proteins uh, that we have in bone and the same protein that we have in the heart. Another mitral animal calcification in aorta. So these all calcification in the heart is, is, is actually one of the cause of the major heart problems. Uh, last night we got a nice book from Professor Pavarojnik and he, when I saw the book he, he wrote about musculoskeletal so I said what, what shall I tell because he said everything in his book so but I will I'll mention some things. At age 30 density of bones begins to diminish. And just at age 30, so we lose some, some, some calcium from the bone even at a very early stage. We lose a bone density, of course, accelerate in a female after the menopause. And then, of course, there's a joint change and the cartilage and connective tissue. And of course, uh, this, uh, decrease in the muscle starts from early 50 years. So I'm 60 now, so you know, I don't know if I lost you know, many. But we lose 3% of the muscle strength every year after 50 years old. And of course, because we have decrease of the hormones like testosterone, growth hormone, and other hormones that actually stimulate the skeletal muscle not to syn synthesize the proteins. And of course, we have more interleukin-6 and catabolic agents that affect muscle wasting. So this nice picture from uh, soft tissue calcification. You see all the calcium around our, around our knee. And osteoporosis, the definition of osteoporosis is actually decalcification of bone tissue. So in the same time we have atherosclerosis that is calcification and osteoporosis is decalcification. So maybe this calcium that we lose from the bone and you know, go, to the, go to the vascular system and the heart is actually coming mainly from the bone. Nice osteoporotic fracture, of course, if you have a patient with an with the severe osteoporosis and the fracture, in the same time, if you look at the heart, you have a strong cal lot of calcium uh, in these patients. So my idea is always when I have a osteoporotic patients, even without heart problems, my idea is advice is that you check the heart for the patients. In the same time, if you have a heart patient with some severe calcification and uh, you know coronary stenosis and uh, aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, you check that even that the patient doesn't have a, you know, osteoporosis or musculoskeletal problems, you check, you do the density BMD test and you find definitely, you know, some pathological changes. So vascular calcification is actually the position or the first, the first step is the position of hydroxyapatite on the elastin fibers. And the first step is the formation of calcium phosphate which can be refused if you, if we, in our diet, if you lower the phosphate concentration, if you eat less phosphate, like actually, but today in, in, a, in, our, in our diet, in, uh, what we eat, you know, the, 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 uh, the company, they put a lot of phosphor and the calcium in the, in the products. So arterial calcification and progression, of course, correlate more with the cardiovascular events, deaths, and pulse wave velocity, which means it's increased and the, 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 the the pressure is increased. So calcium actually is, uh, you know, it's very hard to say, but when I teach my students, I always say the calcium is a bad guy in our body. Usually, of course, has some positive effect, but you know, the good guy is actually magnesium. So it's an initial step in hot hydroxyapatite formation, and uh, which is extremely soluble and, and stable, but the calcium concentrations changes have a profound effect on uh, calcification, calcification of aorta. So changes in our, if you eat a lot of calcium, a lot of diet with the calcium, so it really has some effect in our body. Especially animal studies show that if you treat the, especially uh, some uh, uh, rats, and middle calcification is actually affected if we, if we withheld calcitriol, or if we add vitamin Q to the, uh, to the warfarin. We know that the cardiac patients treating with the warfarin, they are prone to have uh, osteoporosis 
and we have to add some uh, more more diet and more vitamin D in 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 a, in, a, in a diet. So some epidemiologists and preclinical studies showed that really arterial and skeletal mineralization has the uh, the similar pathophysiology. And inflammatory lipids and cytokines, they promote really vascular calcification, but they inhibit uh, bone mineralization. And some osteoanabolic agents like PTH and the bone morphogenic protein 7, they, pro they promote uh, mineralization in skeleton, but they suppress in arteries. Uh, so clinical association of aortic calcification with osteoporosis, there is still really a link between vascular and bone metabolism. And we know that actually vascular calcification pro promote bone loss. So if you have vascular calcification in the hip, we promote more, as Professor said, you from US yesterday, uh, micro uh, architecture is deteriorated. So if you have a bone loss, we actually promote <coughs> more vascular calcification. So as common, it's actually common etiology. The first possibility, actually, this is the first possibility. Bone loss may be promoted by stenosis or bone supply arteries or by systemic inflammation associated with, uh, with osteoporosis. So some kind of uh, therapy that we can have is actually bone nitrogenic protein 7. It's been shown in animal study, it reduced vascular calcification in, uh, of atherosclerosis, chronic kidney disease, because it reduced the serum phosphate concentration, and you know the hyperphosphatemia is actually bad for us. Although there will be some different effect on the small the muscle cells, and this hormone protein is actually important in the genus in inhibitor of vascular calcification, but it's extreme insoluble preclus and it is a it can be as a therapeutic agent. Just for the for the young doctors, just to show these lice proteins, you know, uh, in a bone collagen one, osteonectin, osteoponti, osteocalcin, osteoprotergin. But if you look at atherosclerosis with calcified plaque, we have the same bone proteins sitting in our body. So the hypothesis maybe is a link together. And the risk factor, if you look at the risk factor, and cardio, uh, cardiac and, and the rheumatic patients and osteoporotic patients, they have the same risk factors. So during the aging, we have a more heart problems. During the aging, we have more bone problems. If you look at the therapy, the therapy for osteoporosis, such as calcitriol, estradiol, bisphosphonate, calcium supplements, and intermittent PTH, Paratormo are likely to affect vascular calcification, so they have effect on vascular calcification. If you, when you use therapy for the heart patients, like statins, antioxidants, hormone replacement therapy, AC inhibitors, fish oils, and calcium channel blockers, they may affect the bone health. So it's actually all the ways it's connected. So there is really epidemiological evidence if we, uh, that the bone loss if you lose more bone, we have more vascular calcification with these nine, nine studies shown. So vitamin D is also in, inhibit vascular calcification. So if you have low vitamin D, we have a higher calcif calcification in the blood vessels. Vitamin D affects all other, you know, they can affect many, many other diseases. Like in this review, you see in the heart and rheumatic patients together. So we can treat the both at the same time. So for the vitamin D, that low vitamin D, we have more increased arterial calcification, definitely. And all patients should be examined for vitamin D and, of course, supplementation of the higher dose. How we, how we actually check one of the possibilities we check, you know, coronary uh, uh, calcification of a body? It's actually multi slice CT. So we did a study of, of, on like uh, 1,000 patients. We, we calculated the calcium score, and of course, we did a vitamin D study. In our, in, our, in our clinic, this is a machine that we, that we did it. Of course, this is a nice example of coronary artery scans that we can show the calcium in the coronary cells from the mild, moderate to the severe. And I will show you some, uh, you know, case report. Actually, uh, one female with a very, very severe deficiency with vitamin D, 6.9, calcium core very severe in the coronary arteries. Stenosis, we have coronary stenosis, more than 70% in the coronary. Of course, this patient has angina and, uh, you know, imminent uh, MI. Increased uh, peripheral vascular resistance uh, and increased augmentation index that show peripheral vascular resistance. Blood pressure is, uh, is uh, elevated. And this vascular aid, the patient is eight years older. But if you look at another patient, you see the patient uh, 
Sorry. If you look at uh, another patient that's a female, 65 years old, with a normal level of vitamin D, 28, calcium score you see it's very normal because below the 100 is a normal, and stenosis is less than 50 percent. Peripheral vascular resistance is a normal. Blood pressure was a normal, and vascular age. This patient is three years younger. So this shows that actually that what we need to check in the actually patients. So we found that the severe calcium score was increased 36 percent, moderate 38, and no calcification we found in 26 percent. So if if you have a normal vitamin D, if you have normal blood pressure, if you have normal uh, calcium score in the coronaries, of course, you are, you are much younger than somebody who has more. So treatment or prevention, of course, we can prevent, uh, you know, our aging and calcification in our, in our body. Of course, as I said, hyperphosphatemia promotes what's called calcification. We need to use a diet, hyperphosphatemic diet. There are some therapeutic possibilities like calcium-free phosphate binder, like Sevelamet, that's been shown that markedly reduce calcium, no, coronary arterial calcification in end-stage renal disease uh, versus ca uh, calcium. Calcium trio, like vitamin D analog, pyrophosphate, that uh, many companies use in a, in a, in a dietary product, like emulsifier, stabilizer, you know, uh, regulators, and so on and so. So uh, pyro pyrophosphate is, is actually potent inhibitor of calcium crystallization and prevent hydroxyapatite formation in a vitro, it's been, it's been shown. And the production of uh, pyrophosphate by smooth muscle may be an important defense against mild, medium vascular calcification. Calcium mimetics, another option, you know, pharmaceutical drug that makes the action of calcium. And the calcium mimetic, the reduced calcium, PTH and pH and vascular calcification have been shown in oremic rats. And a recent study in humans showed beneficial effect of uh, sinacalcet, uh, the drug is named sinacalcet, on coronary artery and artery calcif calcification. So this is some possibility for the patients who have severe calcif calcification. Magnesium is actually safe and calcium-free phosphate binder. And of course, uh, you know, I always tell to my students that, you know, treating hypertension is also, you should always include the magnesium in a, in a therapy because, because as we know, the calcium is actually a constrictor for the uh, blood, uh, blood vessels. But if you don't have magnesium in the body, you can't get vasodilatation. So magnesium is a vasodilatory agent. Bisphosphonate is actually another can reduce some calcification, and it's reduced in some uh, vitamin D model. Some terosulfate also may inhi inhibit medial calcification by forming ion pairs with calcium ions, <coughs> the phosphate, as we already said. So warfarin, we should add always vitamin K to the, to the warfarin, uh, vitamin K. And so the conclusion would be the treatment should be preventive and based on the reduction of hyperphysiotemia and minimizing serum calcium. So we can use calcium channel blockers, you know, hormonal and tip therapy, phosphate binders, supplements, and other that that we shown that reduce calcification in the small melanized tribe. Of course, diet is very very important. You know, it's been shown that uh, if we eat, if we eat very small amount of food in our in our in our life, we we, we live longer. So we have a simultaneous effect and large movements center trials needed to confirm these findings, of course. So what is take home message is actually we should always, especially middle-aged people, we should always, I'm sure that nobody in this room check the calcium coronary score, maybe, or maybe somebody did. So we should, we should check our calcium score in the coronaries. We should use all this diet that reduce the calcium uh, calcification. We should exercise regularly because if you exercise, you have, uh, you know that uh, microcirculation is actually 80% of the of the blood flow that happens in the that occurs in the in the blood vessels. Only 20% goes to the microcirculation. So we should, if we exercise, we uh, we actually increase capillaries. We we promote angiogenesis in our body and we stimulate like we have more 20%. It's been shown that people who exercise regularly they have 20% more capillaries in a body than somebody who does not. So if we have more, better microcirculation, we have a, we have a, a 
of course, less disorders. And we should always be positive and, of course, moderate in everything. Uh, so we should always, of course, as I said, in, you know, this is a nice slide that I did in the ATP International Tennis Tournament for the veterans, of course, not, not, not for the young people. So I took the single championship and, the, and the, you know, in the doubles. But this is actually control cardiology and the, and the rheumatology together in the, in the same time. And of course, in the November, I went to the, you know, to the, to the uh, sunny sea to get some more vitamin D that was in November last year. Thank you very much. Please. What do you think about statins in aging? I'm sorry, about Statini. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, actually, I raised the statin question a lot on uh, last time. You know, as I said, the statins are the, one of the most important uh, education in cardiology. Uh, like 10 years ago, I actually, uh, you know, during in one IOF meeting, uh, I, you know, I presented the uh, use of statins in osteoporotic patients. You know, since I had actually problems with the primary care physicians because the patient diagnosed with osteoporosis and I gave the, I gave the statin medication. So I actually, you know that statin has pleiotropic effect. It's been shown in animal studies with the pleiotropic effect and it has some good point on the turnover, bone turnover. So I propose that statins we should prescribe to, to each patient you know, prescribing with anti-resorptive drug, we should prescribe additionally statin for this uh, patient to stabilize, actually to promote uh, circulation, good circulation, to, uh, to keep the plaque stability, uh, you know, and then we'll have, we'll have a better bone. You know, although maybe some report, uh, as Professor said uh, yesterday, that maybe some new report that statins may be, be harmful for some, for some patients, but in generally speaking, I always like to prescribe the patients for the, you know, in associate, in combination, statin and anti drug. Thank you. Please questions. Are you continue or to use magnesium sulfate? Magnesium. Yes, sulfate. Yeah. Magnesium. magnesium. You know, when I when I teach my student, you know, at the clinic, you know, yeah. I tell them bring me glass of water. So I said, put some, uh, you know, calcium dissolvent tablet in the in the in the glass, and of course, when you spoil it out, you know, and then you have some trace, white trace inside. You now you add magnesium inside, and then you clean the clean the glass from inside. So I always, you know, magnesium, as I told you, is I always prescribe supplement. Without magnesium, you cannot block the effect, negative effect of the calcium. So magnesium is always always a needed not only for the bone, but also has some positive effect on the vascular tissue. Please, uh, good luck, good
translate? Yeah, can somebody translate? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So many questions. Yeah. Well, uh, I, as I understood the first question, can, uh, do we, can I see calcification with the people who are not taking supplements? Well, I think yes, because uh, well, especially we, we eat a Western diet. So Western diet is acid, acid diet, or acid diet promote actually, uh, promote the bone loss from the, from the bone, from, from bone uh, calcium from the bone. So acid diet is actually dangerous. We should use more alkaline diet and just not to promote uh, losing calcium from the bone. So this is a question. That, uh, so especially if you add calcium supplementation, of course you promote it more. And uh, second question was... Uh, and women with uh, small... Yeah, the vitamin D, yeah. Well, I, I always recommend not to give vitamin D blindly. We should give vitamin, we should always check vitamin D level and we should treat vitamin D according to the level in the blood, so not to give it blindly, you know. And of course, less food, uh, less food, I, as I said, the people who eat less, they live longer. So less food means especially, uh, especially meat, you know, uh, meat is actually, uh, you know that absorption of meat and the digestion uh, comes in the in the uh, in the uh, big uh, big intestine. So over there, it's a big process that takes hours and hours. So this is actually spoiling effect of our of our bad diet. So we eat, we actually we behave, we eat unhealthy daily. So less food, better life, less calcification. <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you. My question is uh, about uh, 20 years ago, uh, 2019, calcium. Yes. Calcium paradox. paradox yes. Without calcium, no life. life. Yes. yes, of course. Yes. Then, second uh, part calcium killer. Calcium to diet people with uh, uh, with uh, many calcium intake and now calcium uh, okay with vitamin D what is the right between three data about Calcium. Calcium, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's still it's still debate. Actually, my lecture was just to opening uh, to opening some ideas, you know, that we think about. This is not any conclusion that I I want I don't I don't want to say that the calcium we should avoid it. We we need a calcium, but we eat a more 
we eat much more than we need. And we take a supplement that we don't need. So what I think we need vitamin D, when I prescribe vitamin D, I don't prescribe calcium because I know the vitamin D affect absorption of the calcium in our, in our stomach. So wherever I get in food, my vitamin D absorbs the calcium good enough. So if I add more cal supplement, I think we actually, where this bone comes from in the, in the vascular tissue, where this calcium comes from, where this calcification comes from, it doesn't come from outside, it comes from inside. So we need to actually try to prevent, for me, it's less calcium in our, in our body, and I provide magnesium and vitamin D only, and plus anti restrictive drugs, plus statins for the, for the patient. So as I told you, if you have more calcium, it's been shown that if we provide more calcium, we provide, we have more peripheral vascular resistance, increasing pulse wave velocity, increasing augmentation index, increasing the pressure. So sometimes I treat my patients with the infusion of magnesium for severe hypertensive crisis because we have that dilatation effect. So if we heat low, we can get a hypertensive crisis taking a lot of salt and taking a lot of calcium. You eat a lot of calcium, you will get hypertension because it vasoconstrict arteries, definitely. Professor Bintry, please. Bintry, yes, sorry. I'd appreciate your thoughts about the heart trial. So, do you think that bromosomab increases vascular disease, or conversely, that alendronate reduces vascular disease? Which one, Greg? I'm sorry, I did here. So this is this is uh, one of the two pivotal trials with bromosomab. It's called ARCH, and it was a head-to-head -head comparison of Romo with alendronate, and it's from that study that we have the labeling that says that romosozumab causes major adverse cardiac events. Um, that was not seen in the placebo-controlled trial that was called Frank with romosozumab. And so I've, I've heard two conflicting arguments. One is that Romo causes vascular disease, and two is that Alendronate produces vascular disease. There's probably no right answer, but seeing as though that's what you're talking about, I, I thought I'd ask for your opinion. Yes, all right. Well, of course, I agree, you know, I agree, of course, uh, you know, those studies that are actually, you know, uh, confronting each other, like we have confronting studies for the calcium, for magnesium, forever, you know, for vitamin D, you know, study, for statins, we have confronting studies all the time. We, but it's actually, I think, uh, uh, all the studies doesn't look so profound or some, let's say, anti-inflammatory effect, you know. Sometimes, you know, we get results not, not looking at some anti-inflammatory effect that happens in a, in, a, in, a, in a patient. So I think that some, something is always missing in these nicer studies. So, you know, I don't... I, I hope you agree. The last question, please, uh, Professor McCarthy. Uh, I enjoyed very much your, your uh, talk, and I would like uh, to have a comment of, the, of yourself about uh, the talk uh, as to when we have uh, arterial calcification okay. and low vitamin D, you should not eat this uh, blood calcium. But when you give vitamin D, you are increasing uh, blood calcium. And, and uh, you said also that it decreases the calcification, which is a mechanism. Uh, when we have low vitamin D, we have a and, and accelerated and calcification yes. in the aorta. Yes. yes. And so if you give vitamin D, yes. you are increasing but the blood bad calcium. And how, how is it possible to decrease the calcification? Which no, is the mechanism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, you know, it's, it's always balanced in our body, you know, when you uh, when you increase the calcium, it's always the balance of the body between, uh, you know, in, in, uh, you know that calcium is actually effect on the pH in our, in, 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 in our blood. So it's actually homeostasis of the vitamin D promote homeostasis in our body. So not increasing the calcium to the above level. So it's actually promoting homeostasis and it has effect a better. So, yes. so, so you must also uh, make not, not only the vitamin D, uh, a 
assessment in work, but also the investors are Of course, you, you do assessment of the minerals, yes, as well. Yeah, of course. Then if you were interested in how, the last question. Yes, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Я директор института общей и неорганической химии. Я химик, поэтому вопрос может звучать необычно. Скажите, пожалуйста, вы отмечали роль кальция в жизненных процессах организма, в особенностях в костной ткани. А насколько роль магния и стронция важна в этих заболеваниях? Элементы, которые в одном лету из кальция, они одинаковые свойства имеют очень. Магний yeah. и стронций. Над кальцием сверху и под кальцием снизу. Я читал, что очень важно микроколичество магния, которое надает эластичность, а стронция используется ареналла стронция для активизации частиц, которые формируют костную ткань. Остеобласт. Well, of course. Well, no, 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 it's okay. Uh, I think strontium has, of course, anabolic, as anabolic agent, of course, the promote, promote bone, re bone remodeling, you know, it has more effect. But I don't think we have much, much more studies, you know, especially we don't have much studies on the vascular tissue, on this uh, av available drugs, and strontium is not, you know, much available actually for, for, for in a, in a, we, we don't use it in a much of, of, of treatment. So this effect is probably, as you said, you are right, I agree with you. No, 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 Ну, то, то есть он применяется в этом плане. При онкологическом заболевании. Да, онкологическая заболевание. So any radiotherapy oncology patients, they have a much more, more calcification in a tissue, especially in the soft tissue. I think uh, very interesting uh, and the very interesting discussion, now the finished discussion after Thank you. So you see, we always have a calcification even with the radiotherapy. Ich spreche wenig Deutsch. Vielen Dank für Ihre Antwort. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Sokolovich. Thank you.